Some people will be like, ah, oh, don't do it. Uh, some people will be like, oh, the chimney sweep thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And others, this is the last question. Okay. For others, this is what I see as I counsel people in this all the time. What is the armor of God? Someone shout it out. Ephesians 6, what's the armor of God? Say some of the things that are the armor of God. Go. Breastplate of righteousness. What else? What the hell is salvation? What? Belt of truth. Sword of spirit. We can be the Lord of the gospel of peace. What else? A very important one. The chill of faith. Okay. That's the armor of God. All of those are defensive, except for the sword of the spirit. Right? Everything else is to protect you. And God clearly gives us righteousness and truth and the gospel of peace. And he gives us these things. But all you guys are doing is you're going out in the battlefield with your helmet of salvation. And the, <laughs> the flaming arrows are not extinguished by your shield of faith. It isn't up because you set faith down because you put selfishness above it. So you're getting just tacked by flaming arrows. <laughs> and you're not advancing the gospel when you're handing your sword over to someone else and you're just like, hey, chop me up. Cut off my leg or my arm or something. I'm going to give you my sword. I don't have a belt of truth. I don't, I'm going to make my own truth. And you're walking around there saying, Jesus is going to forgive me. If I engage in sexual immorality, isn't he going to forgive me? Yes. He will. Christ didn't just die for your salvation. He died and suffered and died on the cross for your life because he loves you. He didn't just want to change your eternal destination. He wants all of you. And so he gives you all of these things, not just the helmet of salvation. So you're like, whoa, that one almost took me out. But now I don't have any arms or legs. And I get to survive on into eternity. And I get to be in the presence of God where there's no more pain, no more suffering, no more darkness, no more tears. I get to be there. Though only as one escaping the flames, right? Because I've lived my entire life allowing myself to be attacked. Walking right into it. But this temple that was meant to house the Holy Spirit, I prostituted that away. To this person, and that person, and this person, and that person, and this person, and that person, and this thought, and this idea, and this person on the internet, and to my own selfish desires into this harmless relationship that grew into something that wasn't so harmless. Take up the shield of faith. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Have the belt of truth at the core of who you are. Right? And take your feet that are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace and run. Flee sexual immorality. That's why it's there. Look, you can have your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace and do just that. You can run away to a peaceful place that you're not getting it by the chimney sweep and getting dirty. And, and, and how far is it to, and should I, and what should I, no. If something causes you to stumble, get rid of it. If someone causes you to stumble, this is back to chapter 5, get rid of them. And if you can't get rid of them, rid yourself from them and go here. I have two people that are still really, really mad at me because they didn't invite them to my wedding because I didn't, I couldn't associate with them anymore because I'm, I'm moving into what God has for me in a pure relationship with my beautiful wife that I've been married to for nine years, nine months, and 12 days. And I'm sorry, John, I'm not buddies with you anymore. You can't come to my wedding because you're going to be all drunk and hit on my peoples. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> and yeah, kid, we had a good run, right? We did some bad things together and we celebrated. But I have seen the beauty of God and I've been changed by it. And you have it. So I'm not going to hang out with you anymore. Okay, so what I'm not saying. <laughs> okay, but what I am saying, flee sexual morality. Okay, um, as I communicated to you before, I'm not communicating this to you as a legalistic prude who's encouraging prudeness and legalism. I'm sharing this to you as someone who has committed sexual immorality for most of my life. Please, please come to me. 
convincing. Turning away from sin and attaching yourself to God. It's not just turning away from sin. It's not. Repenting is not just turning away from sin. Because if you turn away from sin, Just going to be back into it. It's just a camp high. It's just a period where you were pure for five months, five days, right? Repenting is more than turning away. It's turning away and attaching yourself to God, the one true God who loves you so much that He sent His Son to die on the cross so that He could be with you for eternity. If you will just choose Him. Attach yourself to God. Plunge yourself into the deepest sea of the Godhead. This is Spurgeon's quote that I prayed earlier. Plunge yourself into the deepest sea of, God, uh, of the Godhead and be lost in his immensity. So I got to this place of I was meeting the, with the Lord and I was lost in his immensity. And it's so great. And it's so beautiful. And I'm crying out to God and here he is just thundering, right? The rolls of thunder that is the voice of God was all around me. It wasn't like, oh, there it was. God, you must be here. I mean, it was all around me. It was there, and it was here, and it was there, and it was here, just resounding. You can be lost in the immensity of God. He's big enough to handle the time that we have in our life, the thoughts that we have, what we do with our bodies that should be a living sacrifice to Him instead of prostituting it to someone that we don't really care about, that doesn't really care about us. You can be lost in See, there's something for you there. I'm not just trying to take things away from you. I'm trying to replace these things that will kill you and destroy you and have you attached to something else. Just attach yourself to God. He loves you and he wants to meet with you. And if you go out when it's raining and you run around and, and you don't see him, and I don't know what to tell you, but that's where I saw him. He's just right there. He's like, yeah, I'm right here. Everything in the world, clearly seen. Through what has been made. My eternal power, my invisible qualities, my divine nature, all this stuff is clearly seen. I'm right here. First Corinthians 6 18, free from sexual immorality. Oh man, this breaks my heart. All other sins a man commits are outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. And do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You're not your own. You were bought.
saying this to take things away from you. I'm saying this for your good so that you might connect with the Lord in undivided devotion.